let's solve this system of differential equations. We have x prime equals 2, 1, 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 2, 1, 2, matrix times uh, x. Now this is my x prime, this is my matrix A, and times x. I'm going to use eigenvalue analysis to solve this problem. So therefore our first step will be to find our eigenvalue. This is what we need to find for that. The determinant of matrix A minus lambda I equal 0. That's what we can see here. Our matrix A with the lambda subtracted from it on the diagonal equals 0. Now you could find the determinant of this one with a calculator, but here we're going to do it by hand. And for that, I'm going to try to cause, uh, try to do some kind of operations on this matrix where I can find or cause a zero somewhere here. And therefore allow me to reduce it and have um, smaller two by two matrices instead of these three by threes. Three by three, not threes. Okay, now. I'm going to take the second row, add it to the third one, and write it in place of the second one. That's what we can see here. Equal to zero. Now, we found that we have a zero here. Therefore, it will be easy to reduce this. And I also have to pay attention that I wanted to have a term in the front where these two where I could simply factor them out and allow me to have a simpler uh, result here. Because we can take this and this, factor it out, and find our first eigenvalue. 1 minus lambda equals 0, lambda 1 is 1. Now we have to solve these two determinants. This one comes right here. We find it by this times this, minus this times this minus this determinant, which is this times this, minus this times this. That's what you see in the brackets, equals zero. Clean it up, and we're able to find a quadratic equation, lambda squared minus three lambda plus two equals zero. And the roots of this will give us our remaining two eigenvalues, lambda two and three, which is one and two. There it is, our three eigenvalues. Next, we need to find our eigenvectors. I'm going to start first with the eigenvalue that is unique, which is our 2. And then the other ones are 1 and 1. Those are going to come after. So, let's get started with 2. Here's the formula that we need to find our eigenvector. A minus lambda i times x vector equals 0 vector. That's what we can see right here. Our a vector plugged in with lambda subtracted on the diagonal, and my lambda is 2. My x vector is, I'm going to call its components a, b, and c, and equal to the 0 vector. Transform this into equations. This times this comes here, plus this times this comes here, plus this times this comes here, and equal to 0. Likewise, we're going to go through second and the third line. They will form these three equations for us. Here, I took the third equation and subtracted it from the first one. Therefore, this is what I get. The second equation didn't change. This is the first one, and here we will simply get that our c will be arbitrary, okay? It's a free variable. Now, based on this, we are able to express a and also b in terms of c. And we can write up our first eigenvector corresponding to our first eigenvalue. And that is 1 half c, negative c, and c. How did we get these? The C, we said it's just C. C is C. 
that is arbitrary, right? So we're going to write that there. Now we found B is equal to negative C, so put it in. And we also found that A is one half C, put it in. This is why we express them in terms of C, so we can build up this. We can take C, factor it out in the front, C times one half, negative one and one. There you go. Now we're gonna take our next eigenvalue, lambda two equals one. We're gonna take one of the eigenvalues that equals one. I'm gonna follow the exact same steps as we did for the first eigenvector here as well. Take this formula that we had here, plug it in, turn it into equation form. Our C will be arbitrary. That's gonna give me that B is equal to negative C, A is equal to zero. That will allow us to build up our second eigenvector, factor out the C, 0, negative 1, and 1. Now to continue, we need to find our third eigenvector for our third uh, eigenvalue. But since this repeats what this one was, we will not be able to just simply follow this step because we're just going to get this vector again, and that's what not what we want. This is the formula that we're going to be using to determine our third eigenvector, the x vector equals, this is the Greek letter xi, so the xi vector times t e to the lambda t plus eta, Greek letter eta, another vector, e to the lambda t. Let's plug in what we know. The xi vector is actually the eigenvector that we have found for the first time we were calculating the vector for lambda equals 1 at 0, negative 1, and 1. This one right here, remember. T, E, lambda, T, lambda is 1, our third eigenvector is 1, right? Plus, eta, we have no idea what it is yet, we will have to calculate it. So just fill in eta 1, 2, and 3. And again, e to the lambda t, and lambda is 1. Okay, and here it is how we're gonna find our eta vector. The matrix a minus lambda i times our eta vector equals v2. This is this vector, the 0, negative 1, and 1. And this is what we need to solve. I'm going to take the third row, add it to the second one, and write it in place of the third. This way it will be all zeros. We have only the first two left. We're going to turn this into equation form. Eta 1 will equal 1. The second line, uh, eta 2 plus eta 3, equals negative 1. And in the third line, eta 3 equals eta 3. It, eta 3 will be arbitrary. Okay. Now we are at the point where we need to just pick a value. So for eta 2, I'm going to pick 0. And that will allow me to determine eta 3, which will be negative 1. Now we can write up our eta vector, start by this guy, eta 2, we said we determined it to be a 0, so there you go, put it in, it is 0, this already solved itself, eta 1 was 1, so put it in, and after we picked the value here, we were able to determine eta 3 to be negative 1. Now remember, here results might vary from person to person, because I picked 0. You might pick one, two, three, whatever. Somebody might gonna pick something, something else. But just keep in mind that we have infinitely many possibilities. Now that we have our eta vector, we can come back to this equation and fill it out. That's what you can see right here. And this is my 
third eigen vector corresponding to my third eigen value. And to finish up the problem, let's write up our general solution, which will be simply C1 times our first uh, vector, C uh, first solution, C2 times our second solution, and C3 times our third solution. That written out is x vector equals C1 times E to the first eigen value times T the whole thing times the first eigen vector, then plus C2 E lambda T and my lambda was 1. My second eigen vector was 0, negative 1, 1 plus C3 and what we have found right here, simply plug it in right there. And this would be our final answer for the solution of this problem. Alright, thank you for watching, please give a like to the video so others can find it as well, and have a great day.